Love Line is not for an adult audience. For an adult audience. Love Line may contain sexually oriented content. With sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Listener discretion is advised. This is Love Line. Love Line. Love Line. Love Line. Love Line. With Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. And uh, we're excited to uh, welcome back to the show Alana Uba. <laughs> Yeah, from Meet the Fockers. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Alana, we uh, had on here, what were, what, what, were Legally months, Blonde, were we yeah. talking about, about last time you were here? Yeah, that was about that's 15 right. months ago, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Ago. Yeah, you got it. You got it. It was back then, and I was uh, playing Reese Witherspoon's sidekick. Yeah. That was before number two, I think. Even. Was that? It was. In yeah. fact, Jessica Caulfield and I were on here the first time, and then the second time around, she was sick, and then I Just showed sick. up. And, uh, you know, acted like a, an ass for the both of us, and now I'm here. People are uh, psyched up about seeing uh, Meet the Fockers. Yeah. Did I mean, you see Meet the Parents? There's a, yeah, I did. Cool. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> and uh, it, you know what it was? You know, I don't know, Drew, did you see Meet the Parents? I did. Oop, oh, oh hey, my God. you over. Stop the press. I ever. did. I, you know what's nice about the first movie is is it had a nice combination of sort of funny... Uh, a little, some slapstick, yeah. some physical stuff, but also some some written stuff. Yeah, I, I mean dialogue. The dialogue was solid. It didn't push too hard, but yet it like kept building. Yeah. It was a good slow build. Right. The burn. It had a great sort of tempo and feel to it. It didn't. It didn't try to win you over in the first five minutes. Mm -hmm. Right. It just built. Had a nice slow build to it. And even though things were pretty outrageous, they didn't really go over the top for you. Oh, come on. He right. wouldn't think that. Or no, yeah. They didn't that. get super or, 80s with the whole concept of right, it. Right. Right. And so how, th uh, by the way, I mean, one of the most obviously uh, anticipated uh, follow-up films in, uh, what do they call those, Trip Sequels Sequel? in uh, in years. It's like Godfather Part Two, you know? That's exciting, yeah. How'd you get in on this? Well, this is what's so cool. Basically, I... I um I look nothing like myself in the movie. I mean, I'm, I'm basically playing this, like, 50-something-year-old Hispanic woman with a 15-year-old son. by our notes. Right. See, and I have a little our voice. Our notes, your, your publicist sent us some information. What are they, what Plays she say? a chunky African-American, 50-something-year-old well, man. Well, if I was a chunky African-American, I'd play like this. But basically, she talks a little bit more like this because she's from South America. So she talks like this. So they were, uh, they were looking, I mean, obviously, they were looking for someone who was chunky and was 50-something. Isn't that crazy? And had had that accent, well, I right? went and I auditioned originally for the part, and what they said was, she looks nothing like what we envisioned. So right. then they had the table reading. They were getting closer and closer to casting the role, right. and they thought, okay, we have two days before we start filming, and this is what we're going to do. Let's bring back Alana. She made us laugh, right. and let's just have her for the table read. So I thought, oh. you know what? I'm going to totally go for this. I went to Rite Aid. I dyed my hair black. I wow. <laughs> got one of those box colors. I tanned my skin with that fake, like, you know, tanning, yeah. bronzing yeah. stuff. Drew uses it, yeah. Okay. I just went off, baby, and I, I, I walked in with my double D padded bra yeah. and my big, huge, like, I had a little, like, extra, you know, little panning, you know, around mm -hmm. my, my rumpus, you know, a couple of little pants going really? on and, and little, you know, sandals with the open toes and the nylons going through. I looked like, <laughs> my, like my Tia Licha or my Tia Flora. Wow. And it, it was hilarious, and I walked in just looking just like the character, and I thought, what do I have to lose? What are they going to tell me? You look like a total schmuck. Get the hell out of here, you know, right. whatever. And you won them over. I won them over. They believed it. it Meanwhile, after the reading, I looked back, I looked down on the paper, and it was just totally soiled and like tan. Uh, makeup. <laughs> I was like, if they don't see this, then, then hey, I'm and, safe. And people, for uh, people that don't know, uh, Alana is svelte. I mean, she doesn't Thank have an ounce though. of fatter. We are going to yeah. play Ace's oh, uh, yeah. Ranchero accordion pounds count. Of all that mess, oh, yeah. baby. Ow! Yeah, she's a spinner. Is uh, <laughs> That's what my boyfriend calls El me. El Gyro, they call them. Oh! They call her. El gyro, spiral gyro. Como esta? They call Adam El Cabal. The one, yeah, I'll hit you with a guitar. Yeah, the one who spins, they call I like when they translate. It just sounds stupid. El gyro? Yeah, the one who spins. Ah, right. Right. <laughs> right, el giro. I, the, uh, I like that one. And uh, the other one I like is, uh, I, you know, the ones I'm always confused by is uh, the chupacabra. Yeah. It means uh, right. sucker of goat blood. It's like, <laughs> okay, chupacabra sounds great to us, but... 
but you to you guys it means the the goat that sucks the blood or the blood the goat like you guys couldn't do any better than that we want to come up with a slick name especially for an imaginary you know we don't call a unicorn the horsey thing with this thing on its head we call it a unicorn you know what i mean if in mexico they would call it the donkey with the pointy thing on the head uh, Pegasus? No, no, we call it the mule with the wings and the flapping. <laughs> the flies. You know? The flies. All right. Give it a name. All right. Chupacabra needs a name in Mexico. Right, well, right. It's, it's just so shattering to us because it sounds like its name. Oh, it's, yeah. That should be its name. But the fact that it translates is right. disappointing. Right, yeah. chupacabra. No, that, that that's some scary stuff. My mom used to always tell me, you don't eat all your lime and beans, and chupacabra is going to oh, eat nice. your ass. That, oh, yeah. that's good. That's it's, a, good. it's a winged Ooh. eater. Perfectly. Can't, it, judge. Uh, eats, can't judge. It kills goats. <laughs> and, and by the way, here, something that kills goats, uh, it's just called a farmer. Really, it's like a rancher. We don't, you know, like, if there's a, hey, America, there's this thing that flies around and kills goats. Yeah, all right, tell us when it's killing us. Yeah. <laughs> we don't care what it does to a goat. Yes? <laughs> it's, a, it's a rancher. I don't like goats. It's a UFO. All right, what were we talking about? So, okay, so yeah. for the part, yeah. obviously you do the great accent and everything, and you got the fat suit on. Are you doing the prosthetics in the face? Oh, it's I mean, hilarious. You're, you're they, very... Well, they give me gray hair. They mm -hmm. give me gray hair. They tan my skin. They give me big hoop earrings. I have a 15-year-old son. And they gave me big padded double D bras. I mm -hmm. gained 10 pounds for the part while, mm -hmm. while we were shooting it. My boyfriend kept giving me, like, spaghetti and meatballs every single night, and then but I'd go right to did bed. Did you, just to put it on in your face? Or, or, I mean, why did you need to gain the weight? For your fingers or something? <laughs> my earlobes. To my feel, earlobes were doing the all the acting for me. Yeah. Feel the part, you know. Because it's like, just to, it kind of get a little soft and a little bit more into the character because it made me feel more domestic and maternal. Do you right. know what I'm saying? Yeah, I yeah, do know what you're saying. And sexy. Yeah, no. I, uh, that was fun. Uh, Alana uh, is a very attractive woman. Oh, thank you, baby. And, and it, really, it really would be... Uh, and Adam is all that and that's some. Your yeah, mommy and daddy did a good you. job, too, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Those idiots. laughs> a little dimple. Got a little yeah, on. great job. Let's get, uh, let's get another welfare check. So food stamps and lock myself in the uh, room and yell freak out. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Now, well, wait a minute. So here... It, so they put they put the stuff the jowls on you and the neck roll and all well, that. No, stuff? it wasn't like brand or anything like that. I didn't like right. have like little piles of cotton on the side of my cheeks. But what I did have was you know padded padded hips. But I your, definitely your had the face, padded hips. Your, your, your head is so slender. Yeah, yeah. yeah you have a, <laughs> but you're, it's you're, to, it works, man. It really works. It works. Once they pad everything and they they put my boobs together and I had like big big huge thetas. Yeah. And a big huge rumpus. It really worked. Wow. And they put this little house dress on me and like I have little gray hairs and all around it. I looked like my Tia Flora. I really did. So it, it's going to, and, and I'm, I'm guessing that, and I'm guessing every, th whatever time you spend on screen is uh, to, to great comedic effect because I can already see the oh, character. Oh, it's fun. It's fun. And, and, uh, and <laughs> the thing is, is it's funny. It's right. It's like there are plenty of 50-something-year-old uh, uh, fat-ass uh, chicks with Mexican accents who are hysterical, except for <laughs> they don't know it. Right. They're not acting. Right. That's that's called that's that's their life. I like when they're oh, beating sure. the crap out of the white kids when they're walking them down the street. You're, you don't know that, but they traumatize the blind kids. They drag them, the maids walk them down the street. And once in a while, you see them on the corner just whacking. They look both them. ways, and then they just start whacking. They just start them. whacking them. Yeah, you ever see that, Drew? No. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Your dad didn't give me a raise. Yeah, never see that, Drew. Good times. Oh, it's all over. Your, your kids probably brain damage from that. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Did they used to do that to you? Did you have a, a hot Mexican maid who was like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> now, let me explain Take the Corolla. She has a different view of your life, I think. You're straighten her out. Yeah. Straighten right. me out, baby. All right. Here's here's what the Corollas. Uh, welfare, okay. food stamps, uh, dump that uh, my grandparents let us uh, squat in a beat-up uh, Dodge Dart. There are no, no maids, no, uh, you know. It, it, no jobs. Need, no jobs. We needed a toaster oven. We get it from, from the garage. I mean, you get a garage, garage sale yeah. or a thrift store or something. Wow. Poor, poor and depressed. Oh, That's the man. Girl. Oh, yeah. And and you're like a comedian. You're a DJ on a show. This is amazing. That's me, but yeah. But, of course, you're working with a, with a you know, shrink every Yeah, beautiful time. Dr. Drew over there, board certified. <laughs> it's hot. All right, what were we talking about? Uh, oh, my, the phone. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so uh, Meet the Fockers, by the way, is uh, out, uh, is it this Wednesday? December 22nd, babes. Oh, let's That's see, when Wednesday, December 22nd. So it's, oh, it'll be, is it two weeks from this Wednesday? A couple weeks, babes. Mm -hmm. Oh, already, already buzz going. See, it's so right around the corner. See it. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, maybe we should, uh, all right, let's, let's sure. take a call. Let's take a call. I just, oh uh, I just thought it'd be fun to do uh, with Alana. Uh, well, we got this... that, but we also got the, uh, we also got the, uh, when you call 
the uh, Mexican guy and uh, the old lady picks up the phone. What? You get the you get the who? My favorite. Oh Ooh. yeah, we did that the last time. Yeah, remember? I love that. Can we have sex Mexican style on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Later, yeah. later in the oh, we can do that. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> 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 Tiffany. Yeah. You're uh, you're 19. Yeah. Um, my question was like I was dating this guy who's uncircumcised, and we're like mm-hmm. kind of still, you know, doing a nasty or whatever. But like, I don't know. I never had a guy who was uncircumcised like that. Nasty in more ways than one. Is he dirty? Does he, <laughs> does, does he bathe himself? Mm-hmm. What? Yeah. What is your question? Your yeah. So what's up? Just what do you want us to do? <laughs> Come on, there's a wet nap. What a coincidence. Like, Tiffany, what is your I, question? My question is, well, uh, I mean, I don't know what to do or whatever. I'm like kind of scared, like if he wasn't able to get it up or whatever. This doesn't sound like a question. Yeah, it's, it's just either either bogus or you're dumb or confused. Well, or, yeah. or, or, well, they say uncircumcised men, you know, have have a better time in bed. Is, yeah. it, is it true? No. No. But most of the world is uncircumcised, Tiffany. It's not as though it needs any special attention from your standpoint, anyway. Yeah. Okay. Call them oil. Well, I don't understand. Have you have you never been? You've not been with him sexually. Well, I mean, that's going to be well. It'll be the second time that I'll be. Know, what it would happen or whatever. So. What happened the first time? The first time he wasn't able to get it up. All right, well, that has nothing to do with the circumcision or lack of circumcision. Yeah, I've been with plenty no. of guys. No. Or, yeah. yeah, me too. Even yeah. El Gyro? El Gyro. Never got it the happen. spinner. What? The one who spins. <laughs> she who spins. Mm, like that. Uh, uh, Tiffany. Yeah. Yeah, if... if <clears throat> Let me say this. If what? guys who were uncircumcised uh, could not achieve erections, there would be no world. Right, because most, right, most of the world is uncircumcised. Well, not only that, for the first uh, couple million, million years, years yes. uh, there were no moils. Yes. So, so there would be, there would never would have never would have created. Yeah. So yes. the, the, whatever his erectile problem is, it has nothing to do with the circumcision. Uh, so, okay, all right, so maybe okay. a little calmer situation, right. uh, maybe yeah. he's not ready to have sex yet, maybe he's on some drugs or alcohol or medications, but uh, not the circumcision. Yeah, yeah, work it out. Work, work it out. It out. Yeah. All right, Alana, here's what I want to do with no. you. No, come on, I just love this. Oh, they're going to they're they're do need sex need again. No, I don't okay. want that. I want the part. Here. Here's all you got to do. <laughs> okay. I do the thing where I'm calling uh, my uh, boy Oswaldo, okay. and uh, the thing is, is his... Uh, Great aunt. His, his, yeah, it could be his great aunt, could be his, his mom, yeah. whoever's living with him, okay. picks up the phone. And uh, then I say, and I can't figure this out. Alana's uh, half Puerto Rican, half, half Mexican, Mexican right? Yeah. Maybe you can figure this out because okay. we talked about this last time you were in here. You Italian? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You get the suspicious thing. First one is, uh, is, uh, is Ozzy there? Is Oswaldo there? First first reply? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before you answer, it's not just suspicious. It's suspicious and nervous. Yeah. Who? Who? <laughs> oh, that's the first one. Who? Oh! So you got Yeah, you got to hit me with that one. Okay, okay. And then the next one is uh, I say, Oswaldo, and you you act like he's holding a gun. Someone's holding a gun to your head. Oswaldo, not home. Shaking. No, no, he not here. Why not not Right. See? Oh, yeah. oh. And then the next one is Eduardo. What's your name again? Oswaldo? Oswaldo. Oswaldo, no está aquí. Yeah. Is that yeah. good? It's good to yell. Uh-huh. You know, it's nice yelling s- to someone off the phone, too. Huh? Like someone, someone's uh, back uh, who's uh, behind you. Oh, okay, you got it. Right, we'll try. We'll try first. Okay. Take see how it goes. <clears throat> ring, ring. Yeah. Um, Hello? Hi. Uh, Hi. Is Eswaldo home? Huh? <laughs> Eswaldo? It's not love, ha, ha, <laughs> Is Waldo? No, is Waldo no está aquí. I ate him. <laughs> Who the hell is this? That's that's insane. Then by that point, I hang up and I'm confused. Yeah, Does yeah. he still live there? I don't know. <laughs> what's Do going they know on. who you're talking about? Yeah. Oh. Why? Why the who? You, you the guy? It's your grandson. It's his house. It's his house. You're living there. Be be, be ready. You for know what people else it sounds like? Sounds like I swallowed, and she probably thinks it's like you know. You know, crane collar, and I'm seeing uh, collar I, or something. Well, any name will do, but I just mean uh, there's always the suspicious who. But I think that's a time buyer. That's all. Who? All right, let's right, right. You did a wonderful job, oh, by thanks. the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thanks. that's perfect. Thanks, thanks. That's exactly how it okay. goes. We'll try. We'll, we'll, okay. do, we'll do three good. We'll do three in a row. You ready? Okay, you got it. <clears throat> Is Oswaldo there? Oh! 
is, <laughs> we'll do a variation. Okay. Is Eduardo there? Yeah. <laughs> and we'll do uh, one more. Is um, is Enrique home? No, Enrique home. Perfect. Oh, thanks. Perfect. I try. Yeah. No, I'm going to cast you. I'll put some weight on you. Thanks, and man. And cast you in the show. Talk to the skin up a little bit. <laughs> Melanie? Yeah. You're 14? Mm-hmm. What's the matter, baby doll? Well, basically, I'm in this, quote, like, relationship type thing um, with my boyfriend, and we've been going out for about, like, a month and two weeks. And well, let me stop you. What do you mean, quote, relationship? Why, why did you put it? Quote, unquote, well, you mean? Yeah. Well, like, why it's is it? A, like, it's a relationship, but, um, I don't know, I just feel like it's not really working anymore. Why? <laughs> well, because, like, we've, like, we've already, like, had sex and stuff. And so, you're 14. How old is this guy? He's 14. Mm. Mm. Okay. Are you, are you using any protection? Oh, of course. Good. Mm. What are you using? Um, latex condoms. Okay. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Why latex? Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, latex. All right. Mm. Uh, all right, so well, well, yeah, what's he doing? He's not calling you back, or what's going on? Well, like, he'll call me, but he'll just be, like, really distant, and then he'll say, like, oh, well, I'm tired, so I'm going to go, and it's only, like, well, seven Maybe you're both freaked out by having had sex so young. I, mean, I imagine either one of you would be flipped out about that. No, he's a 14-year-old. Guys are just, they, they, they're, they're goofy. They don't know how to conduct themselves. They have no yeah, but, rap. But imagine I, you're, you're in that far in a relationship. You're 14, like, oh, what have I done? How, how, how do I handle this? How now? do you even know about how to have, it, how to, how to have an orgasm at they that don't. age? I mean, I, I had my first orgasm as when I was 16, and I did it by myself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like 14 spinning. and stuff. Right. Yeah. Spin is what it's all about. Yeah. She who spins. <laughs> she who spins. Melanie? Yeah. Um, all right, yeah. Uh, you guys have been, how many times have you had sex? Only once. Only once? Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and was you, that an okay thing for you? Well, yeah, it was fine with me, but like, it's just kind of strange. So, like, he'll be all distant and everything, and then, like, I'll complain about it. They're like, hey, why aren't you calling me or anything anymore? And he'll just be all like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, I love you and blah, blah, blah. And it just, yeah, right. it seems kind of strange. I, I he, he's just I, a spaz, I, really. He's, I mean, it, you, you guys don't know how. Well, this, this is all you do at 14 but, is you know try what? to read this, each Here's each my other. thing. Here's, here's my thing about Go. this. This is as good an outcome as there can possibly be from 14-year-olds having sex. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. in, in the horrible outcomes, we end up with somebody suicidal, somebody pregnant, mm -hmm. somebody on drugs and alcohol. The best possible outcome is two goofy 14-year-olds completely confused, mm -hmm. far too far into the intimacy, mm -hmm. not knowing how to handle it, in pain, confused, spinning around, probably screwing up at school as a result. Yeah. And, it's a bit, and it's as good as it gets for 14-year-old having sex. It's right. a disaster no matter how you look at it. Right. So kind of, Mel Melly, pull it back, just you know, Keep the relationship going, but stop the sexual thing. It, it is screwing everything up for you. Three out of four 14 year old guys are spazzes anyway. And not, not, I don't mean spaz, but they don't communicate well. Guys, guys in their 30s aren't good at communicating yes, in a relationship. Of 14 course. year olds, are you kidding me? Are you kidding? Plus, the ones that get laid magically are the ones who can't form a sentence. Right. I don't know what that is. By Somehow. the way, the, the woman's like a graduate student at 14. The guy's like some uh, sort of Martian. Uh, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they just. Yeah, you talk you talk to your friends' kids once in a while, and it and it's like, uh, how's it going? <laughs> fine, <laughs> good fine, so fine. fine. You know, you got you playing baseball tomorrow. You mm -hmm. you looking forward to that? Stop, stop, stop. So it's so okay. Stop. You know they look down, they get weird. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know what it is, but fourteen year old guys, and that's a guy who's getting laid. <laughs> you show me a guy who can string together a sentence. I'll show you guys not getting anything until the like, junior <laughs> year of college. True. <laughs> don't let your boys talk. Don't. Don't worry. You know what I'm going to do? If I have sons, I'm going to have them practice brooding. Brood. You take an hour, put that pen down and put that textbook down and work on your brooding, Come on, son. Eddie, you know that comedy is the greatest, oh, the greatest yeah, social lubricant. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look what it did for you. It's fantastic. <laughs> I'll tell you who was a big cut up in high All women high say they too. want a guy with a good sense of humor, oh, Jimmy Kimmel, funniest oh, guy huge, in, in, huge in, in, in high school. Then? No, I didn't. He tells me every day how funny he was. I uh, didn't didn't translate no one ounce of poontang. Not one. Oh, poor ounce, thing. Poor Jimmy. One ounce. All right, ounce. Hey, before no, we go to break. Yeah. Ranchero countdown. Okay. 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 Yeah. yeah, now here's how the here's how the game here's how the game is uh, played. Uh, we we play the ranchero music. We come in in a random ranchero song in a, in in any random song in any random point and we try to decide in advance how long before we hear an accordion could be the beginning of the song, could be the middle, could be the end. How long? Now, Drew, you make your first uh, bet. First bet. Because got to give Alana a eight shot. Se eight here. seconds. Eight seconds. That's a bold. A bold. Going deep. Deep. Wow. Wow. 
Yeah, now you can go immediate, too. You could just hear the accordion in wherever wherever engineer Chris... Uh, I mean, you know Ranchero music. Right, right sure, absolutely. Yeah, the accordion figures a little bit into that music. No, it's go very unpredictable. Yeah. Drew's going eight seconds. Alana, what do you got? Oh, six, man. Okay. Six. six. Definitely six. Smart. Smart. Oh, absolutely. I, I know Reasonable. my Ranchero music. Reasonable. What are you doing now? I'm, I'm going go three seconds. All right, I think it's good. Three, three seconds. That's good. It's probably going to be immediate. All right. I now, hope not, we'll, not another arena. We'll count you in, all right, Chris? Okay. In uh, five, four, four three. three, two, one, go. It's that horrible <laughs> song. I hate this I song. I love this song. <gasps> Well, that, come on. Oh, it's all Chris, that didn't count. No, no, no. Stop it. it. It stopped. Yes, no. There you go. Yeah. Oh, no, well, hold on. <laughs> Drew, be quiet. <laughs> Pause, that's oh, really? Yeah. It stopped, huh? Yeah, All right, now wait a minute. Now that's, that's hard to figure now. Wait, play me a real Ranchero song. This one just sucks. Wait. Hold on, let this song play because this is this song's making me horny. <laughs> <laughs> the Gringos returned to the apartment and he's horny for his uh, hot little Alana. Okay. Yes. Yeah, there's your. Hi, there you are. I'm yeah. waiting for you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a tight oh, smock you're wearing. I see. It's what? my momo. You like what you see underneath, baby? I'll tell you what, I'm going to flip up that flat like a quarterback getting no, under no, center. Do it slow, do it yeah, slow. Right slow, against the stove, baby. Right, I'm going to use this crystal right. for Lou. What uh, is your name again, oh, baby? Oh, yeah. What's yeah. your name? He who spins. He who spins. <laughs> he who spins. Yeah. I wonder more rapido. Oh, yeah. There you go. There you go. There you go. Ay. What is your name? All right. Get out of here. My husband's going to be here any minute, baby. <sighs> Okay. Yeah, no all worries. right. All right. Um, mm. All right. Wait, just uh, next I time, do it a little faster. Right? Let me give me one of those corn muffins from the road. <laughs> you got it. Okay. Thanks. And just a sip. I just want to hit off that Gatorade for. Wait, oh, hit, off that sunny, to hit off that Hit off the Sunny D. Thank you. Hey. Thank you. Let me just uh, just uh, let, let me just uh, get a Let me just well, <laughs> just, want to, just want to wipe my wick off I with that see, horchata you, there. Wipe it on my mumu, baby. Wipe it right here. I don't want to come home smelling like you. It's gonna smell like cinnamon. And, one last uh, thing, and a one last thing. Product, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. I'm, uh, I'm double parked. Oh. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, let's take a little break. Uh, <laughs> I really Enough. do feel like I did something there. Yeah. Well, I got a head rush there, Drew. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. pregnant. Alana Ubach is uh, <laughs> pregnant. Tonight. Alana yeah, Ubach sure. is pregnant. Sure, she's uh, working on her night. She's uh, also going to be in a Meet the Fockers, which is. Uh, Meet the Fockers. You see? <laughs> Hold on a second. I think, now there's something interesting here, which is... The FCC, this allows this. Well, here's the thing. The, the joke of, of the yeah, movie, of or the guy's name, is that it's close to the F word, yes. not quite. But if you say, you say it, and you say it verbatim, meet the Fockers. If you say it, but you say it with, with an the accent. Accent? It, that's it. Yeah, it, it is. It, it's the real thing. But, but technically, we have an out. It, you know what I'm saying? Which, uh, by the way, the fact that there's a technicality shines a bright light on how ludicrous all this right. is. Right, but but <laughs> but but Alana is is free to say in her accent, "Meet the fuck." <laughs> <laughs> all right, we we won. We won on a technicality. She's got an accent. I wonder, that's the I wonder name if of the, the movie. marketing of this film is going to be restricted because of that. Uh, it hasn't heard it so far. Uh, All right. Well, let's take a, a quick break. We'll be uh, right back to talk a little more with Alana about what movie? Meet the Fox. Everybody, it's the Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Alana Ubach is uh, here tonight from uh, the new movie. Meet the Fox! <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy, but I laugh every time. <laughs> yeah, Meet the Fockers, everybody. Uh, it is uh, out in a couple of weeks, out on the 22nd, on a uh, Wednesday, December 22nd. December 22nd, go check it out. going to be huge, and Alana is uh, such a versatile actress that she's able to play a uh, nubile, English, hottie, 
uh, who's uh, next to Reese Witherspoon in Legally Blonde, and now a uh, husky Mexican maid <laughs> in uh, Meet the Parkers. I mean, that, that's range, That's range. Right? Yeah, that's range. And uh, <clears throat> they just so... Um, if you uh, didn't tune into the first uh, segment, uh, we're uh, doing a little uh, little Mexican accent night because uh, that is the character. What is your character's name, by the way? The character's name is Isabel. Perfect. Isabel, and Isabel is the um, South American. Not Central America, but South America. South America, Central America. You know, we couldn't cr really quite figure that out because she makes chimichangas. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, she's supposed to be from like South America, Central America. So Central we, America, though. Yeah, but most but of chimichangas people... are Mexican, aren't they? Chimichangas. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, Mexican. but if, but if mm -hmm. you're from El Salvador or Nicaragua, sure, absolutely, she's gay. El Salvador. Yeah, El Salvador. She, she's she's from all over the place. You know, but they, they would never, they would never. The El Salvadorians never call themselves from South America, though. Right? That no, Central, Central America, America, absolutely. Latin America. Well, when Jay Roach and I were trying to discuss where this character might be from, he was like, you know, take a take a pick. She could be from Colombia. She could be from Argentina. She could be from Nicaragua, Guatemala. And I was like, oh, my God. Argentina? Uh, what, where would she be from? Where should she be? Action? Oh, God. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so it just basically, you know, kind of evolved into, you know, just a, a big potpourri of all the accents I've heard of growing up. And, and is your, your half... Puerto Rican and half Mexican? Yes. In, in your... And who, all who's, who's, sexy. Who's what? Yeah, because... Mm -hmm. And you're also very... Mm, yeah. Um, Short? You, well, first off, you don't look Puerto Rican or I look Mexican. like a Jewish American princess. Right. I what know. happened? How'd that work? Let me what? tell you something. My mom has red hair and freckles. Huh? It's mm. hilarious. She's Puerto Rican? Y she's Mexican. She's from Sinaloa, Mexico. And, she's, and she's, Yeah, but my grandparents all had, like, blonde hair and blue eyes, but they were Spaniards. What, right, the Spaniards. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they were Moranos during the Spanish Inquisition, blah, 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 boring right. story, but they all came out to Mexico and Puerto Rico. My father had blue eyes. So it's 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 just a combination of the two of them. You know, they they, well, they... Wow. They bore a Jewish American little princess, didn't they? Is, is anyone Jewish? In my family? Yeah. No, I mean, you know, I, I, I would definitely think there's a little bit of Sephardic in us, if anything. Did, did I mean, you, I, did you, uh, where'd you grow up? I was Downey. born and raised in Downey, around the corner from the Carpenters, Karen and Richard. Wow. Yeah, dude. Creepy. <laughs> But they don't, really creepy. They like lived at home, and their parents wouldn't let them move out. Oh yeah, like no. Selling millions of records. Yeah, they had this huge, huge cake of a mansion that was right around the corner from us, and it was like the biggest house and like a big slew of like track houses right by the freeway. But they were very glamorous because they gave out dollar bills during Halloween. Oh wow! So anytime I'd go and knock on the door, I'd be like, "Oh, it's me again." They're like, "Hey, weren't you the little pumpkin that just came by a little while ago?" But I'd I'd make like twenty bucks in one night. It was awesome. My uh, my mom was a health food nut, so she would Pine hand cones. out. <laughs> oh, how embarrassing! Straw, the trail mix and stuff. Hey, they, no, she would hand out the mini pa boxes of raisins. No! Oh, yeah. And uh, one year it was um, walnuts. Oh. And by the way, let me tell you, this stuff it, it becomes ammunition when they get to the end of the driveway. Oh, they just yeah. turn around and fire yeah. it right of back course. in the house. Oh, that's terrible. You just stand on the porch do dodging fire from the disgruntled nine-year-olds oh, all day. Yeah, it's horrible. Get the message? No, no. <laughs> no, no, let's ask for the kids. And look, just turn the lights off and uh, close the door. Blow the, the door candle out, yeah. the jack o' lantern. Uh, people keep moving. Uh, they don't right. waste their precious time coming up your crappy house and getting a walnut. But, but uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Do you see what I was dealing with? That's kind of she was out of her time. She was that damn Alyssa. walnut. No, no, no. no. conscious. No, no, no. no, no. no. Uh -huh. All right. I'm so, uh, yeah, Alana, cool. here tonight. Uh, movie's coming out a couple of weeks and. Uh, Ever. I, I predict this movie, uh, I think the first movie, <clears throat> Meet the Parents, uh, was like, uh, it did well, and it was word of mouth. People mm -hmm. told everyone, go go see it. This, I, I don't know what it did on its opening weekend, but uh, I predict this is going to have to double that last. Thing, yeah. uh, pretty yeah. amazing, all the masters. It's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, De Niro and uh, Streisand. Uh, did Are you, you in scenes with everybody? Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. That's and awesome. Dustin Hoffman is hilarious. He should be on the show. Well, oh, bring he's him the up. funniest guy. Go he's get just, him. He comes back with little one-liners. He, he is Lenny Bruce. He's Lenny Bruce. Jesse? Yeah? You're 16? Yes. What's up? Uh, what's up? Um, yeah, okay. I'm just wondering, uh, Dr. Drew? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm really interested in your, uh, career and whatnot, and I'm really interested in getting into that, actually. And I'm just wondering what type of schooling you went through and what classes and whatnot you had to take. To to be an internist? Yes. You you got to go to medical school, and you've got to do a residency in internal medicine, and then a fellowship in addiction medicine. Oh, well, you want to be addiction medicine specialist, Jesse? Uh, yeah. I, um, 
And so you got to get it. You got to get into a good college, and then you got to get into a medical okay. school, and then you got to get into a residency. You got oh, about. Forget it. Just okay, marry okay. a guy who you makes money. You got about. Wait. Okay. Um, I don't know if this is weird. I'm kind of really interested in like, um, marriage therapy and like sex therapy and stuff. Is that weird for like? Yeah. I still. Know. It's still. If you really want to get into the the <clears throat> depths of it, you still need to get an MD first. Well. Okay. Hey, hey Jesse. Yes. Yeah, you could be a counselor. You can get a PhD kind. or a PsyD. Okay. okay. Jesse, like, how are you doing in school? Are you doing well? Um, yeah, I'm doing very well actually. Um, I'm right now. I have ten classes. Um, three of well, most ten of them classes are in high school. The yeah, I'm I'm taking um a few APs in there, and good. I mean it's it's fine. And just get into the better. best college. Just get into the best college you can. Don't worry about okay. what you're taking right now. And in fact, um, don't waste okay. too much of your time with the sciences in college. Take a lot of okay. liberal studies too. Yeah. Okay. And Why? um. Okay. Uh, me and my friend listen to you all the time, and we just love you guys so much. Like, Adam, you're all powerful. Okay. <laughs> it's and true. And, uh, Drew, you In more ways than one, baby. You have yeah. no idea, Jesse. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. And, okay. I like the brown sugar, oh, too. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know your, your Ranchero Countdown? Yes. Um, we created a game ourselves. Um, it's called the Cutoff Countdown. Um, okay, we're we're in band together, and our director... Did I just cut her off? Yeah. Is it called the Cutoff yes. Countdown? Uh, well... Is that what she was calling it? You won! Yeah. You won the countdown. You cut her off. Jesse? Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. It's called the cutoff countdown? Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're, we're in band together, and our director cuts off randomly at times and just starts bitching. So, um, yeah, we're just like, well, before we start, we're like, okay, I give it eight, like eight measures, you know? Right. So before your band, before the yeah, conductor he, stops and starts he, yelling at everyone. Before he, okay, so he's like, okay, and he starts. That's good. That's good. Right. Amuse yourself. Yeah. yeah. I just That's cut good. her off, ironically. Yeah. You know, the the first round, speaking of Ace's uh, Mexican Ranchero Accordion Countdown, it, it felt, a, I felt, a little, felt a little empty because, I didn't because like the there was song. a long beat. Yeah. I, I don't care if you like the song. But Drew. you want to feel satisfied by the Ranchero Drew, spirit. you don't understand that that is the no, essence that is of Ranchero. No, no. The worse, mm -hmm. the more the Ranchero. <laughs> you need live mariachis coming in here and, like, We're, really busting moves. And it's working on it. But until then, right. all we have is engineer answer. That, that song is the essence of it because you're, are you annoyed? Do you feel like punching somebody? Yes. Or is your skin crawling? Yes. Does your, does your, is your My scalp... My teeth, I just... Is your scalp dialing? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Then that's Ranchero uh -huh. music. Do you understand? You've been moved. All right. All right. So I think we have to play another round. All right. Because mm -hmm. someone had a big, long pause in the middle of it. You want one more call? Ranchero yeah. countdown. No good. You don't like that game. One more you, call. Uh, a quick one call. more call. Quick call. Then. All right. Okay. And Chris, give us a real Ranchero song. Please. Nicolette, don't know. And we don't want we don't want the boy screening. It, it has this has to be pure. Drew. Random. All right, random. Nicolette. Hi. You're 25. I'm 25, and What's up? basically, I've been on a Jekyll Provera shot for five years. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's tough. Mm hmm. And I love it, by the way. But the oh, wow. only problem that I'm having is I'm getting excited with my current boyfriend. Um, and this is, you know, happened in the past, too. But I'm not, you know, I'm not getting wet, basically. So that, I'm that, is a rather, that is a rather common side effect of the, the double shot. I am, shot. like, yeah. having to sneak in, like, the KY. I'm like, oh, you dropped a sock. Oh, I'll go get the condom. Why oh, sneak go in? Get he does that so quickly. He, wait, wait, wait. He doesn't care, <laughs> Nicolette. Just bring it right in. He'll be fine. Oh, I know, but it's kind of embarrassing, though, you know what I mean? Well, it's like, a side effect of the shot you're taking. It doesn't, it doesn't make you depressed. It doesn't interfere with your libido, which it can, for many women, do. And it's just making you a little dry, so you bring the lubricant in. That's fine. Can I ask you a question? If you masturbate a little bit before you have sex with your boyfriend, does that help at all? I have actually never masturbated before. Mm -hmm. And then another That's question fantastic. Is... You'll never need a boyfriend again. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and then I don't know if I've actually... I've been with, I don't know, a few guys. I don't know if I've ever had an orgasm either, uh -oh. so I don't... Can't really ask my girlfriend well, about it because I'm like, yes, I feel like a gamp about it, basically. So can I make a suggestion? the depot kind of works against you. It can make it Hold difficult on. to have an orgasm. That's part one okay. of the problems well, with that shot. But she hasn't always been on the depot. I, I understand, shot. but she's been on for five years, and that's a lot of her sexual. Oh, she has. Yeah, five whole years. All right, and let so alone you, you make... may want you you may want to talk to your job maybe get some estrogen cream because sometimes estrogenizing the vaginal area helps with that lubrication. Where do you put it? 
Put you it down there? Right, put it right on in. Wow. And uh, sometimes perhaps that can be enough estrogen in your system to restore things like orgasmic function. All right. Let, let Alana give there her There are these sex shops that you can go to. They're really great, like the pleasure chest. And what you can do is you can, um, you know, go up to the person in the front of the counter. Mm -hmm. And you can say, look, I'm really having trouble having an orgasm with my boyfriend. Basically, do you have any sort of, like, little little <laughs> belts that I can wear or something like that? All right, let me explain. Well, honestly, let I've tried it, and they're fantastic. Who they're you, great. Who you're talking you to. You turn them on while you're having sex with your boyfriend. And zzz, really? Oh, you see the heavens. It's the, awesome. The spinner says. Wow. Wow. El Giro. Passionate. Mm -hmm. Speaketh. Passionate. It's well, great. It's great. Yeah, it's great talking to the guy at the pleasure chest, the guy with the wearing the hockey jersey and the cutoff sweats <laughs> and the, the flip-flops. He's fat. He's got that bad goatee. It looks like, like the guy from The Simpsons that has the... the uh, the, yeah, uh, the comic, the book, comic book store. store. Right, yeah, right. and he's like, yeah, if we're selling the vibrators, we gotta, we gotta fire them up because there's no return. Still, does obviously there's not. They don't take battery shots. <laughs> everyone's everyone's focused now. Now everyone's looking at you. <laughs> All right, that's good. He bangs a couple of times. Okay, it's solid. All right, <clears throat> you want some NICADs with that? I don't recommend NICADs the first outing. Uh, just go with, hurt yourself. Yeah, you just go with the more generic type uh, battery and then work your way up to a Duracell. Uh, okay, because uh, yeah, you could burn out. Uh, you could burn out the whole. There's thing. also the pocket rocket. That's fantastic, sweetheart. Go get that. Yeah, she needs. To, she needs to get going on stuff. I, I agree. All right, should we play a little uh, Ace of Mexican Rancher Place your bet. countdown? Alana, here you go. What's your bet? How long? Twelve counts. Twelve, 12 seconds. Twelve seconds. Instant. instant. I'll go instant. 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 I got to tell you that twelve is a lifetime. Oh, but I like no, 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 eight, eight, eight. Eight. Sorry. Eight. 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 It's a better bet. Yeah. All right. All right. No. That last one was about twelve. <laughs> I'm going. Uh, I'm going five. All right. I'm going five. All right. Zero, five, and eight. Okay. You ready there, yeah. uh, Chris? Three, two, one, go. Now instant. Oh, no. Yes. Yes. Oh, it's all over the place. Yeah, Anna, what are you talking there about? It was, no, 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 it was everywhere. Yeah. What are they singing? What are they, what are they talking about? They're yeah. saying, um, give me back my pussycat, give me back my pussycat. Where did, where did that pussycat go? Meow, meow. Meow, meow. See, I told you, they're not scared to deal with topics. They're, they're willing to take society by the lapels and shake it senselessly. With the, with they, the topics they tackle in the song. Yeah. They're, they're like Nirvana meets Bob Dylan. Oh, just social commentary is deep, oh. profound. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Oh, I'm listening to that. All right. Listen to those magic fingers. This is, this is under protest, Drew. Under no. protest. Uh, hey, Anderson, how under dare protest. you? Didn't we just talk about how it's horrible music right. and it makes our skin crawl, and now we're playing hey, it? Hey, for like hey Anderson, Anderson will you relax? Dude, are you, are you racist or something? What's the matter with you? <laughs> I think it's kind of groovy. It makes me feel like an extra in traffic, you know? Yeah. 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 Good movie. Benicio Del Toro is like... Find that pops and sucking on the popcorn. Anderson, Anderson gets a buzz when he hears this music. It's a problem. Mm. Yeah, because he's flashback. never heard it. People, many people have never heard this sober. sober. I never have. Yeah. It's like being hungover and not like, yeah. drinking. Yeah. Well, has Anderson ever heard any music? So, oh, oh no, no, wait, no. I don't think so. No. Maybe just whatever's on his clock alarm <laughs> it goes off at noon. All right, let's take a little break. I like this song. Yeah, yeah this, this is, is good one. This yeah, is this is music, right? Yeah. I think she just said, wax my ass. And, and I've, and I've oh, that's <laughs> nice. And I've always told them, this, nothing says Ranchero like New England in the wintertime. Mm. This, doesn't this just smack? Oh, absolutely. It's maple just a, syrup and covered bridges and oh. the leaves changing. Oh, 100%. Can't you see it? Oh, yeah. 100%, oh, definitely. Let's uh, take ourselves a uh, little bit of a break. Uh, Alana Ubach is uh, here tonight from the uh, new movie. Mr. <laughs> Meet the mother. Oh, I don't think that's going out. Oh no! I, I don't think that's sorry, going out. Sorry, sorry, uh, never again. I, I'm sorry. I, I think it's the name of the movie. Me the mother the effort. All right, all right. All right. We'll be right back after this. Hey, everybody. Love line, madam. That's Doctor Drew. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Alana Ubach is here tonight. Yes. Alana is... Uh, Once Ubach. 
a, uh, once, a very, very <gasps> talented uh, actress who's uh, in the new uh, Meet the Fockers uh, movie, which is uh, coming out on the 22nd of December. It's not even worth plugging this movie. It's going to be that huge. Oh, thank you. Your mouth of God's ears, right? Plays. Uh, I, yeah, I, you don't need God. You don't need anyone on this one. Cool. It's going to be huge. Yeah. I'm, uh, people are buzzing about it already. And the snobs I hang out with, you know, I mean, the writers and the uh, pseudo intellectual types are all they're all getting primed to see to see this one. And I thought cool. I think the Barbara Streisand ca casting was great. And that it, obviously Dustin Hoffman. And uh, it, it's just uh, everyone, everyone's just uh, on pins and needles. And uh, your your character playing the uh, big Isabel. Spanish, Isabel, the yes. big Spanish maid. The Spanish housekeeper. Is, uh, and I look nothing like my part. Awesome. It's awesome. You're going to steal the show. Oh, th thank I you, I predict there'll be so. a spin-off. They'll spin a whole movie they'll off. No, they'll have a whole TV series. series a yeah, TV Isabel. series. Ah, Isabel's cooking show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that everyone enjoyed the chimichangas we made last time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? That'd be very cool, right? Uh, so, uh, now I don't know where I was. Oh, I, I want to say this. I don't know if I... I, uh, I did this thing today where I... Uh, I checked my messages, uh, my saved messages on the uh, message center. I don't know if you guys have the message center. It's really weird and mm. depressing, and you feel bad. Hmm. It, it, the thing is, like, if you have a phone machine, you kind of got to listen to your messages and then write them down. Mm. But if you have that message center, mm. which the phone company provides, they can do this thing where you save the messages. So oftentimes you'll hear a message and you'll just immediately save it like that. But then if you're like me, you don't go back and listen to it for three months and then there'll be 28 of them. Right. And then one day you'll finally go, I got to listen to these messages and it's horribly uncomfortable because it's like the, the date will be like September. 22nd, <laughs> and, it'll, and it'll be like, hey, Adam, I'm in town for three days. It's your old buddy, Rob. Give me a call. Look at, and then you realize you never called the guy, and, and, and you, you, your skin crawls. You start, I actually will sort of walk in place because I'm <laughs> uncomfortable. Like, I feel, I got, I, and now here's where it gets bad. I'm not uh, uh -oh. name dropping, but uh -oh. Dexter from The Offspring called. Oh, yeah, you're supposed to fly with him. Two months ago. Yes, I remember Hey, that. buddy, it's Dexter from The Offspring. I'm coming in, I'm coming out to L.A. in the next uh, couple of weeks. The band's got a break. Oh. Want to take you flying? Oh, Give me a yeah. call. And I'm like, ah, it's it's food. The, the date on it was like November second, oh, and I'm like, no. uh, by the way, that might have been 03. <laughs> yeah, it could have been 03. And I was like, I, I, you know, it's like, and you start talking, like you go, yeah, yeah. hey, sorry, buddy, That's hey, cool. buddy, buddy. It's, no, I'm gonna, hey, but I, it, 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 it's, 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 a, it's a horrible thing to have for a person like me. I've realized because yes. you immediately yes. you hear, you're in a rush, you're listening to your message, maybe you're looking for someone, you just Driving. hit to save, it, hit to save. Right. Hit save. I'll get back to them. Hit save. And it's just a long slew of people that are dying or old friends that have come into town or rock stars that want to take you in the airplane. And you completely blew everyone off. And, and by the way, once it gets into the save pot, you don't go back and check it very often. You just feel like the world's biggest a -hole. No, because it accumulates. Well, who wants to go through, like, you know, old yeah, laundry? Yeah, and it's weird. You really you have, you have this visceral thing where you start talking and you're sorry. It's like when you step on your dog. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. And the I dog's do like, the ah! And you're like, I, uh, no, I didn't. Uh, didn't mean uh, it. Yeah, you're talking to the dog. Yeah, hmm. that's what it was. Drew, <laughs> you don't have that message center, huh? No, I answer my message no. center. I mean, you know how frustrating it is to hold somebody that doesn't answer his phone or his message. Got to get that message center. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alana, you have message center? Don't. Yeah, my boyfriend likes to save all of his messages and, like, make a huge story out of all these messages that, that are saved. And they're usually, like, messages where I call him up and say, we really have to talk about that, that, you know, that French maid outfit that I found inside of your closet yesterday. Please call me back. And, like, That's he'll that. save them and have me listen to them. That's it's torture. Right. That's right. It's torture. Not as much torture as your buddy's going to be in town for two days. Oh, He's staying like at the best. airport. He'll so give him a call. It's been too long. we got to catch up. <laughs> that was six weeks ago. Oh, man, dude. Oh, what an a-hole you must yeah. be to them. Right, Ever so. had a couple of people in jail wanting you to bail them out? Hell, and, you know. A whole family. Oh God, I'm sorry. Let's uh, get back to the phones and speak to three. Uh, line Michelle. Three. Marie. Line three. All right. Let's talk to Marie. Marie? Yes. You're 25? Yes. You uh, suspect your husband is a cross-dresser? Yes. Why? Hmm. How come? I was watching this show on HBO the other day, and I saw, um, it just gave me some clues that I think that maybe that's what he's doing. Like what? Uh, well, it was talking about just the, the type of person that, that was talking on there, and it just, it really freaked me out, and it made me really scared. Uh -huh. Oh, well, why did you Whoa. say so? Talk about specific information. Man, was that clear now. Just talking about the kind of guy. 
Well, you well, know what? It just, it just seemed like no, that. No, no, no. He's okay. a cross-dresser. We don't <laughs> no. need to hear her anymore. I mean, when you hear that kind of damning evidence. It's like evidence, a Carver novel or something like that. That's amazing. Dre- That's well, a we smoking gun. Up, we dressed up for Halloween as Mary, yeah. Kate, and Ashley and thought it was going to be really funny. I couldn't get him out of the outfit. What, what, what do you mean? Like, well, into the next week, or what do you mean? No, it was like 3 o'clock in the morning, and I couldn't get him out of the outfit. And my friends were looking at me going, you know what, Marie? Chris is not, you know, he's liking this outfit a little too much. Uh, hold okay. on. Chris, Marie? Yeah. Name dropping. Does that mean anything to you? Something Hello? Hello? Yeah. Wait that's, a minute. that's a bogus call. <laughs> you know, Alana? Oh! Is that you? Pardon? Uh-oh. Athena! What? So get off the phone! Get That's my sister! How did you get all the air? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. I just got some headphones there. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does she oh, sound just like me? You're yes. very cool. Oh, thanks, kiddo. Uh, you know what? I think Adam has a little bit of a crush on you. Oh, he does, doesn't little he? Bit. Yeah, I know. I can tell. A little bit. Believe me. My sister's a therapist. Uh, really? Believe me. I know the stuff. You got a little <laughs> bit of a crush on my sister. That's cool. Yeah, no, she's it's all a little bit of a crush. He's crawling across the tabletop here. What are you talking about? You know what, though? I, uh, we really did dress up like um, Mary Kay Nashley, and Alana did our makeup, and it was fantastic. Oh. <laughs> no, we oh. looked exactly alike. It was fabulous. Now, this, this is wonderful. <laughs> all right, Athena, I'm, I'm yeah. going with uh, Athena. Hold on a second, yeah. Athena. We gotta, uh, we're got we running uh, late on our break. That's I your love sister. You, all right, we'll talk uh, all about her uh, when we get back. Uh, <laughs> wait, what's the new on. movie we're uh, going to see? Meet the Fox. All right, after this. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Alana Ubach is here tonight. And I'm naked. And her sister. She's, uh, yeah, who called in uh, just a little bit earlier. One of the rare females to <laughs> sort of uh, mm-hmm. give us a bogus call on her own initiative. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Got that gene. Lana's in uh, Meet the Fockers, which is uh, coming out on the 22nd. Meet the Fockers. Well, check it out, man. On uh, December. Plays the big Spanish maid. And I was thinking with uh, Alana, I think, you know, what's the downside? Because you and I, we're sort of students. We know people. We know women. We know how they work. You know, you have, she's beautiful. She's funny. Oh, that's funny. what you think. Do you really think you know women and you know what, how they oh, work yeah. and everything like yeah. that? Well, oh. yeah, he, he I knows. do. You know, we you know just enough. hang out with women who make you think that you know women and how they work and what they do. Well, he knows enough to know that nobody really knows. There's not, there's no rational. No, no, we know people and construct. women are people, sort yeah. of. The point is, is Alana is attractive and she's naked. funny and she's naked and she's talented. Uh, where's the dark side? Can I show you Where something? Where does it come Watch, out? Where's the dark side? Yeah. I'll show you right now, show baby. Show the dark side. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> yeah. One, two, three. How's that for the dark side, baby? You like what you see? You like that, baby? Isn't her, sis- is, isn't her, isn't her sister here, vomiting now? Slap this, Adam. Are call, are Come here, Corolla. Ven a are, are, are calling a pet team? <laughs> one, one or the other. Sister says the therapist. She's either barfing or calling a pet team. You watch that Hookers uh, on the Brink uh, show on uh, HBO? It's oh, awesome. Oh, it's fantastic. They go to, I the, have they go to the worst neighborhoods wow. in uh, the world, and they mic up the Hookers, and it's uh, <laughs> and then the guys... Uh, try to talk him down from an $18 hand job. So watch, I'll show you how that, that one goes. Oh, we, go. we get in the car together. Mm-hmm. And you ask me what I want. Okay, baby, what you need? Uh, how much for a BJ? Oh, a BJ? Mm-hmm. Oh, come on, honey. How you much? dirty, we inside of a Corolla. You can say the word. <laughs> say it, baby. How much come on, for, say the word. How much? How oh, much? How much? Mm-hmm. Well, how do you want it? Mm, I, w- I you want, want a little street. bit of hand What's job first. I want to go down on you. Yeah. How long do you want, want it to last, I want a little baby. hand. I want a little hand, and then I want to finish with mm-hmm. the BJ. Oh, okay. So how do you like? Okay, hold on. Here uh, we go. How much? How much? Oh, something's growing. I need a price something's first. Something's growing. I need a price. It's I... called the price. That's what's growing, baby. No, I got it. It's going to get... How about... How about 25? 25? 25, my... Who am I? By the rock or five? 25, my father. 25. you got to do better. You got to do better than that. 25, I'm going to pull it off of you. You got to do me better than that. Oh, come on, man. I lick the children and everything. <laughs> what you talking about? I find that you right, ain't doing everything 18, while I'm going down. 18, 18. 18? 18. 18, man, and I, okay, now I ain't going to the balls. I'm going to cradle your nuts. Okay. Okay? Right. You can just get those cradling nuts, days, and you, you can just pull it out of your mind right now. I'm just going to go down on you and go take 10 seconds. All right, $12. Give me the cash now. It, I'll give you half, half now, half now, half on delivery of semen. What is this? 
this? Excuse me. I think I was 12. I got well, 12. I just going to give you a hand job, man. Blue balls. No, you I, got, are, I need I need. Uh, don't even think about coming unless I, I get my other six. I got an ATM that only gives out $12. Listen, yeah. you better bust your nub, but first, <laughs> you, give me, you give me six more. All right, hold on. I get, unless my wife uses I'm out here, man. my wife uses the van for carpool. I want to put I want to put a what, trash bag down. What first. is this? What is this? This is a Boba Fett. What kind of sick perverted man are you? You got kids. Well, she just used she carpools. Tomorrow's her day, so I'm what gonna. What did the GI Joe go out here to? It's got automatic doors. I just hit the clicker on the okay. remote. Okay, here we go. All right, let me focus now. Be quick and okay, perfect. well, don't talk. I gotta focus uh, now. All right, don't make that noise. No, I got to uh, focus. If you do, just be quiet. It's going to take too long. All right, let me focus uh, now. You're okay, a don't small stop. mofo, ain't you? No, okay. You no, poor no, thing. No, no wonder you, you'll be you getting just, hookers off. You just added 10 minutes. You want to go for 20? <laughs> okay. Now focus. Now focus now. Oh. All right. All right, let me just find, let me just, let me just put, let me just pull your skirt up just mm, a little bit mm, there. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me. You want to come, Let me, let me, okay. I got to stop you guys. I got to stop you guys. Let me focus. That's right. Let me focus. Okay. Let me focus. All right. All right. All right. All right. Out of the van. I gotta go. Out of the van. Twenty-five. Here's two dollars. I gotta go. You came in my eye. Here's the wet nappy. You busted a nut in my eye. All right. Well, FCC's going to pull us off the air. Drew, please jump in. you got to stop this. I'm trying to Don't stop make me take my 38 out. <laughs> you got to stop. You stop by putting your hand over your mouth? All right, let's keep going. I'm sorry. We really repulsed you, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm afraid we're going to get off the air. Ah, that's, no, all right. no, that's all right. That's all right. Safe harbor. Sorry about that. All right, you ready to rock? Yeah. All right. Rochelle? 20? <laughs> oh, God. We scared the world, didn't we? <laughs> Oh, yeah, we got uh, I got Alana's friend on this. Rochelle? Uh, Rochelle? Uh, hello? What's happening? Um, yeah, um, I, my, me and my ex-boyfriend, we worked together for about three years on and off. Mm -hmm. And he was, um, he's a Marine, but he was very aggressive. He drank a lot. He had a temper. Mm -hmm. And we broke up. And mm -hmm. now this guy, like this other guy likes me, but he's also a Marine. And he has all the traits that my ex-boyfriend had. The traits that you shouldn't have been involved with in the first place. Yeah, and that's your dad like? because I want to go out and date again. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. okay, I am working and going to school. It's just. Mm -hmm. well, Alana asked the right you. question: Is what what is What's it that makes like? you? Yeah, what makes you attracted to guys like this? And usually, it's something to do with dad. Yeah, my dad of rant. Uh, probably he abandoned me when I was about three years old. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Well, all right. Well, now you so you got rid of one abusive guy and you got a new abusive guy. So why don't you get rid of this guy right. and then not replace him with a, an abusive guy? There you go. Well, yeah, it's just problem. But I mean, like, how do I find a decent guy? I oh, guess. there are no decent guys. No, none. Zero. All. Zero. Engineer Chris beats the crap out of his old lady every night when he yeah. comes home. Rochelle, you you are attracting and attracted to a minority. Look at him. He's a killer. So if you okay. cannot be with someone who is a normal person, who is not disturbed, rough, trade, aggressive, that's his game. abusive, mm -hmm. then you need treatment. Mm -hmm. you got to get some help. Yeah, I went into therapy, and I dug up a lot of shows, mm -hmm. like dark secrets I was holding in. You know, my, I was kind of depressed for a while because I was mm -hmm. on the demo shot. But Yeah. Well, listen, Rochelle. Uh, all you have to do is not go out and uh, actively uh, F up your life. That's a lot. Of, let, let's talk about this for a second. Uh, people want to know clear, what, clear what, why everything's coming their way. Oh man, why why the firings? Why the uh, abuse? Why the bad boyfriends? Why the uh, road rage? Why 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 why? The, you go out and find it. Uh, there's ways to avoid it. You should really be spending your life trying to avoid bad people and bad situations. I mean, if and you think by the about way, it, if you're the kind of person that has been abused and is attracted to abusive people. You should use that attraction to avoid, to know that somebody you avoid. Right, right. You should learn to read that. But let's let's talk about this for a second because we always talk about, uh, well, if you're a winner, you have the uh, ways of a winner. You, 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 Yes, yes, you do make smart decisions in business, relationship, what have you. You also avoid a ton of S, maybe more stuff than you actually go after. You actually spend yeah. more time avoiding, avoiding negative situations and actually can have a better life through not getting stabbed, for mm -hmm. instance, by uh, going with your buddy down to Van Nuys so he can score some crack and hang it out. The, the voice in your head that says, uh, you go alone, I'll catch you on the next one, uh, that's 
that's the voice you got to listen to. And guys who have who have good lives, who have good jobs, who uh, make good money, who have good relationships, and don't get stabbed. Uh, they listen to that. Don't do it voice Absolutely. even more than the do do it absolutely yes? yes but it's weird it's never really it's like that when did you know you wanted to be a doctor drew well i knew when I, and then and then you wanted to get into it it's all about sort of these positive moves there's mm -hmm. a lot of holding back mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff where like uh yeah i'm glad i didn't go with those guys it would have right. got shot with them that's right and and some people can't do that no they can't yeah. and uh and then they want to know why it keeps happening? Well, it keeps happening because you're bringing these people home, you're going out with them, mm. you're telling your boss off, all this kind of... There's a lot of uh, sort of staying at home and buttoning your lip you got to do on the road to success. Yes? Remember the delaying, the delaying gratification. You've mentioned that. We haven't mentioned that in a long time. Right. Yeah, they, they basically... Um, I, they, did a, they did a study once, which I thought was interesting, which is they just took a couple of kids and they said, uh, look, we can, we'll give you like uh, three peanut M&Ms now and you can just eat them now, or we'll give you a whole pack uh, later, but we're not going to tell you when. And uh, the kids that basically said, give me, the, give me the three now and just gobbled them down and wouldn't wait, uh, were, turned out to be the losers and the one that said, uh, well, we'll wait because there's a payday. That's uh, 20 M&Ms. We're mm -hmm. going to wait on that. Mm -hmm. uh, those kids ended up being the winners, and that's what it's about. Yeah. It's the delayed gratification. Everyone I grew up with was like, what? Go to college? You paid? No way. I'm going to work. I'm getting paid. And they get nine bucks an hour for the rest of their life. It's, it, they would, that is the one component that all the losers I hung out with had, which is they couldn't, you know, you would say to them, look, you just... You go for six months, you learn a trade, and then it's like, pfft, six months? No, no, no. I got to get paid. I'm getting paid when I go there. Mm -hmm. And so they would, in, in lieu of spending six months or four years or two years or being, getting some program and learning something, like you could tell them, look, do six months, you'll get 30 bucks an hour, or you can get 11 bucks an hour for the rest of your life. They're like, give me the paycheck. People yeah. are obsessed with time. That's the biggest thing, the biggest problem with our country. Everyone's it, obsessed with time. And it's not even time because if you really were obsessed with time, uh, people are sort of penny wise and pound foolish. Right. Stupid people take the cash immediately. Well, there, there's actually brain mechanisms responsible for being able to suppress certain impulses and delay for more mature ones. Or right. More, Right, more abstract ones like a payoff in the future, or something that right. they can't even conceptualize. A chocolate factory at the end of the moon. <laughs> and that's all. By the way, all success is is whether it's college or interning at the station or at the at the job or whatever apprenticeship. Putting your time. It's all putting it in and then getting the payday. Mm -hmm. Like Drew over here is a doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, except for you don't make money. Problem. All right, <laughs> let's uh, let's go to the phones. And what about uh, Alana's friend? <laughs> What's going on? Skylar is on the uh, is on the phone. Hi, Skylar. What's up? How you doing? Wow, how you doing? I'm doing really good. I have a question for you. Um, I date a girl that's uh, Puerto Rican, and she uh, shouts out things during sex uh, in between moans, and it's it's definitely her language, her tongue. And I never really had the guts to ask her what some of these things mean, so I wrote some of them down. I want to know if you could uh, decipher some of them. You, you speak Spanish, right? Yes, I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Skylar, somebody you know? Uh, Skylar is actually a friend of a friend that I know. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. This already sounds bogus to me. All yeah. right. Well, you know. Right. You know. All right. Now, don't say any swear words on the air. I don't think Go. there's any. I don't know. Ay Dios Go mijo. ahead. I, 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 Dios mijo? Yeah. That means, um, oh, my God, baby, faster, faster, more, more. No, it has to be faster? Yeah. Something like that. No, mio just is like. Dios mijo is like, oh, my God, oh, my God. Oh, dear. Yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah, yeah. If, in Alana's word, it would mean faster every day. But, but yeah. isn't isn't me <laughs> isn't like Mijo my son or something like that? Mijo, is it mio. It's Mio. I, I, oh my God! Oh. Adios, Mio. Oh, I it's not, oh. it's, it's not like when uh, the guys when the uh, moms call their uh, boys Mijo. Oh no! Gosh, no! I, I hope I hope this one. woman isn't doesn't have a son and isn't like having sex with you thinking about her son. All right. Is that what Mijo means, son? Mijo is yeah, my little son. Okay. Yeah. Adios. Yeah. Okay. So it's the different Mijo. Yeah, Mio okay. is, is my oh, it's like, Mio. yeah. Okay. Mijo oh, and Mio. Yes, I see, exactly. like Mio, like yeah. me. Okay. Yeah. What else we got, Skyler? No tan pronto. No what? No don't, tan pronto. Don't choke me. No tan pronto. No tan pronto. No tan pronto. Oh, yeah, don't, don't choke, don't, yeah, please don't asphyxiate me don't while we're me. having yeah. sex. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't. Don't choke yeah. me. Yeah. Seems like well, a request. Uh, okay. Skyler. Don't, don't suffocate um, me. Yeah. Ay yeah. grande. I, oh, oh how big? 
Who are you dating, Kitten Natividad? <laughs> An incorrect A, Oyo. Incorrect Oyo? Yeah. yeah. Incorrect Ojo? Like wrong eye? Wrong eye? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like wrong what, hole. How do you say hole? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh. Yeah. That's what Incorrect it is. Incorrect hole? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, how do you he's say just that? screwing around. Yeah, Sir, who are, you, who, who are you dating? Uh, she's she's just a spinner. All right. Uh, All right, Scott. God bless you for calling in. Yeah. That was a little comedy bit I yeah. think he was doing. There you it's go. fine. That's good. It's good time. <laughs> I know the girl he dates. She's uh, crazy. Really? Yeah. Oh, is that right? Puerto Rican, huh? Mm-hmm. Spinner mm-hmm. also? Yeah, she's mm-hmm. a spinner. Mm-hmm. She goes mm-hmm. to the pleasure chest a lot. She's weird. Mm-hmm. 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 Anderson wants to know what a spinner is. That's, uh, that's this, a uh, small gal. <laughs> who can, uh, you know, on the wiener. Yeah, that's right. I said it. Oh, man. Bill? Yeah. The show's filthy. How's it going? It's gross. Yeah, yeah. it's disgusting. Awesome. Bill? Yeah. I find myself turned on by cartoon nudity. Mm-hmm. And not just cartoons, but video games, too. And I was wondering if that's in any way weird. Mm, it's, it's, a, it's no, nerdy. cartoon bodies yeah. are way better animated than, mm, than yeah. any real body. Yeah, it's it's nerdy, but but it works. No, Hello right? Kitty. Oh, that's that's some good. Yeah, she's hot. Piece of ass. Along the lines of Jessica Rabbit. Mm, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. All so, right, Bill. God you bless go. you for your non-question. Hey, I've always wanted sure. to do Charlie see Brown. You, uh, see you in Bogusville. What is with our calls tonight? I don't know. We, we only have non-questions. Charlie Brown is yeah, sexy. I know. I, I Charlie Brown is hot. I was talking to someone today about it, it was Peppermint Patty, like the first lesbian on television. Hi, you chuck. Yeah. What, was yeah. she like an intentional lesbian? And we were sort of trying to figure it out. Like, did, when you sat down, when Charles Schultz or whoever created Peppermint Patty actually sat down to create Peppermint Patty, was he thinking no, lesbian? No, he was, he was thinking tomboy right. kind of thing. Yeah, but he here, was thinking like Jodie Foster. Here's how you, all of a sudden it kind of evolved into here's a, I think he was thinking lesbian because it's voiced by a male. Is it really? Yeah, and when you're seeing dudes for the voice of your lady, that's a lesbian. No, but I. Uh, but the point is, though, I don't think he sat down to do it. I think he became that. All right, but when the point is, is, when the time came to start interviewing voices for uh, did he, Peppermint did he Patty, cast it? whoever cast it, yeah. yeah. Whoever cast it, it set it up. Sure, he had a part in it. He, it's yeah. a dude playing uh, Peppermint Patty. That's got to be rough for the uh, 65-year-old guy who's uh, now the voice of, you know, he was 30 in 1969 when he was doing Peppermint. He's like, yeah, I'm Peppermint Patty. Yeah. Like <laughs> and she always had that girlfriend, Marcy, too, who was yeah. that, like, you know, yeah, four-eyed kind of, uh, yeah. you know, granola-eating, very yeah. intellectual kind of silent type. Yeah, she wore, she wore like, uh, sandals and shorts. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sandals. Chuck, but she did dig Charlie Brown. She did like him. Yeah. I think she wanted to be him. Yeah, maybe that was big it. Big time. She, she wanted, wanted a big penis wanted like Charlie Brown. She wanted to steal his genitalia. <laughs> Blockhead. Hi, you Chuck. <laughs> I still like that. Hand it over. <laughs> Hand over the goods, Charlie Brown. <laughs> yeah, give me your junk, Chuck. <laughs> give me your junk, Chuck. All right, let's uh, keep on uh, keeping on and uh, talk to... Uh, Kendra, who's 20. Kendra? Hi. What's happening? Uh, my sister has some, uh, she's displayed some addictive behavior in the past. My parents mm-hmm. actually sent her to a youth home about nine months ago. Okay, and Kendra, she, that, that's not displaying addictive behavior. That's having full-blown addiction needing treatment. Mm-hmm. All right. right. What is she addicted to? <clears throat> she is addicted to drugs, and she had some problems with alcohol. So I don't know if she was addicted, addicted, addicted to drugs. Adam, you got that? Drugs. Oh, so that down, right down there. She wasn't a chocoholic. <laughs> <laughs> she was a pill popper. She used to pop like cold pills, like Sudafed, and. All right, so she's she's a full blown addict at a young age. So what what is the question? I was just wondering if I am at risk to become addicted to something because I remember you talking about the addiction ism gene it's about 50 percent per child that you can get that potential so if your your sister had it you didn't get it probably yeah but okay. why because she well, would have shown itself by now well, you, i don't I, I first of all i can kind of tell what i'm talking to an addict that's, yeah that's not kendra all right but and, if you have let me just make make sure this is right if you if, if your parents either one of them's an alcoholic or both of them are an alcoholic it's still 50 50 per kid it's about right? 50 per kid the, the only exception i've seen to that is cherokee indian if you have mm-hmm. as much as a quarter yeah. Cherokee, and it's 100%. Oh. Yeah. How can you say uh, neither that? Neither of my parents 
How are can you say that? Alcoholics that are addicted to drugs. Yeah, hey, like yeah, 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 um, both my parents are white. My dad does have some, I do believe it is Cherokee on his side of the family. All right, family. well, there you go. Mm -hmm. So True. Mm -hmm. True. You're magical. Mm -hmm. He really is. Surprising. Hey, uh, so anyway, Kendra. So you may have to be careful, Kendra, just be, be cautious. And, and so the thing is, too, is uh, American Indian uh, aside, uh, one parent or both parents doesn't make a difference. No, it does, interestingly. It's, so you figure, well, if both parents are alcoholic, it goes up to 75% no. where, but it doesn't. The other thing is, is if you have three kids and, and two of them are full-blown addicts, it still really doesn't matter. You're still 50-50. Right. Is that how it works? That's right. All right. I have a question for you. What what happens with if you have an addictive personality? Are uh -huh. you trying to like basically self medicate yourself no. because you have some other kind of chemical imbalance? No, it, no. it's not. It's not, addictive, totally, totally it's not addictive personality. It's an addictive potential. It's a certain certain kind of brain chemistry. Wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, we actually can create it in animals, and we know exactly what it is. And mm -hmm. it, it, it has some unique properties to it in terms of how you respond to opiates and thrill seeking behaviors and how your amygdala functions, these sorts of things. But fundamentally. There's nothing intrinsically emotionally wrong, although a lot of kids that have the addictive gene are raised <clears throat> in addicted families, and that's where the trauma sets in. Mm -hmm. All right. right. You know what I was thinking about, Drew? Mm. Maybe uh, on our next call, uh, Chief Thunderbear could uh, come in here. Oh, my God. Can you imagine and a lot of a Chief Thunderbear? Well, it wouldn't <gasps> be Alana, it'd be uh, Isabel. Or Isabella, Isabella and Chief oh, Thunderbear. Yeah. Yeah, where, like is, to, where think, is the Chief Thunderbear? I think uh, just a lot of Chief Thunderbear would, would be... Uh, well, you got to translate, though. Drew. I'll translate. To translate. I mean, it's North American chalk. Oh, you me, do it right now? Go, right North now? American chalk. Go it's toy It's running... Uh, let me just... You got people with problems, man. We'll yeah. bring him then at the... Because the, 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 the the he may stay for a while. He's out playing Tetris. He's... Still, still plays. Being, Every time I GD come in, well, you're, you're, talking, you're talking about the addictive personality. Oh, that's right. Well, this chief, <laughs> chief. We'll explain who Chief Thunderbear is to a lot of when she knows. Well, he's American Indian gynecologist. Uh, Choctaw he's, only he's, speaking. Choctaw he speaks only. A little Ooh. Choctaw. He, he speaks a little. Hi, how are you? Little Hi, bits how are he's been studying English and it gets annoying because these little English and breaks pieces, in here. But and Drew there. will translate when he speaks Choctaw, which is eighty percent of the time. Oh, that is hot. Yeah, and then we'll have. And now, is it Isabel or Isabella? Uh, see, you have to lubricate the dog lips for me if you want to. Yeah, it's Isabel. Isabel, which is uh, Alana's uh, character from uh, the new movie, Meet mm -hmm. the Fockers, coming out in a couple of weeks. So, all that after this. <laughs> Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Alana Ubeck is uh, here tonight. Alana is in uh, Meet the Fockers, which is uh, coming out on the 22nd of December. And uh, she just told us off the air funnier than the first one. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Wow. Alana plays the uh, accented, hefty, 50-something-year-old uh, maid, Isabel, yes. in the uh, movie. I thought it'd be nice to uh, pair her character up with uh, Chief uh, Thunderbear, who's uh, down the hall playing Let's Tetris. I'm, I'm ready. I'm, He's I'm, American I'm, Indian. I'm getting into my Choctaw. Uh, Drew, you, you will translate. I'm going to get him. Okay, Chief Thunderbear is who now? I'm going to go get him. Okay. Bring, no, explain. Him in he, he's here. a gynecologist. Oh, wonderful. Gynecologist. Doesn't he's really American speak Indian. English. He doesn't right. speak very, just little bits and pieces of English, mostly chalks up. But thank God Drew's a college man and studied. Chalked up. Oh, right on. Oh, okay. College, okay. yes. Okay. Let me go Hold grab him. And, so, and Isabel can, uh, oh you know, maybe oh, Isabel has sure, some gynecological sure. problems. Well, Who knows, you know. Well, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, she's... Oh, here it okay. comes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Come on, get down here. Right. I am. He's coming. I okay. want you to take over on his Tetris game. All right, all right. You hold on to Tetris game, and we'll, we'll we'll deal with him. Don't go far away. Oh, here he is. Hi, Chief. Hello. Yes. Hey, hey. Yes, she. Yes, she's a hot girl. Yes, and her name is Isabel. Hot piece of ass. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Well, let me tell you something. Doctor, I have a problem. Oh, and then she's speaking directly to uh, you, Chief. Yeah, yeah. My chocha is so angry. Mm, uh -huh. It is. Mm. It is pissed off. Mm, See, mm, it's mm. furious and it needs to talk. Mm, dump stream water on chacha. Cool off. Absolutamente. Mm. See, mm -hmm. I have a question for you. Mm. 
How come they have those mean cold duck lips that they shove inside you all of a sudden? What's up? Mm. You have mm. to warm she, up the duck lips. Yeah, hey, what the heck, a chicky? Settle down, Isabel. Settle down. Relax. You have to warm them up. Relax. 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 I won't tell you the words he used to describe you, but oh, one he's getting a little angry. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, is it, I, I'm going to have to translate from Isabel to the chief hey, also. Hey, uh, hey, uh, chicky, I will. Hey. I know. She's a little high strung. Show squat back of hand. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> she's talking about the spectrum we use to do your gynecologic mm. exams. Mm, yeah. Do they actually use a speculum? In, uh, uh, I use a dream catcher speculum. Yeah, so they, it's in his... In his yeah, mm -hmm. it's, oh, so it's a, a dream catcher. It's a dream catcher he uses <laughs> when he does his exam, and it feels just like a feather. Yeah. Oh, so it feels like a feather. Yeah, tampon Aye, catcher. Yes, tampon catcher. Yeah, oh, relax, chief. Yeah, oh, okay. hey, he's saying, hey, uh, Israel, every once in a while, Israel, 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 no, no, he's saying a prayer, he's saying a prayer. Yes, yes. Yes, he's saying a prayer for your film that should have great success. And uh, he would like to be the uh, the set gynecologist if there is somebody that serves on the set there. And he will use his feather duster, so to speak, to help you should you need a speculum exam. Absolutely, oh, oh, you've got the job, Chief. Fantastic. Barbara Streisand, great pubes. What's up, Jim? I have a question today tonight. I was wondering, um I like having anal sex and my girlfriend's kinda hesitant to let me try it. And I was I was have you, trying to call him to Hang on. Sorry? Slow down. The chief doesn't speak English that fluently. He's got yeah, to, he's yeah, got to yeah, sort of well, digest yeah, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. He, he likes anal sex girlfriend and no like. Whoa, when the heck a chick is well, he who pops. <laughs> who, who packs fudge? What? Hey, Jake. Okay, what, Jim. Jim, what? who have you done this with before? I'm sorry. Who have I've you done this old... with? I I've, I've done it with a uh, past girlfriend. Oh, a, a past girlfriend. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Oh, he. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Let's <laughs> see. Oh, I'm a chick. Hey, yeah, hey, chick. I don't know. Your business end of time. Yes, he's yes, yeah, good. He's, uh, she's impressed okay, that you've been able to pull that off by right. 18. But mm. uh, don't expect, as Chief uh, points out, the, all the women to cooperate with that because mm -hmm. there are many that do not like it. Mm. Even I'm though the Chief is very the, impressed. Mm -hmm. Actually, her, what? Like, I'm trying to call. I'm, I'm asking Dr. Drew if there's any. Uh, any like health risk or anything that I uh, hang on, slow well, down, slow down. Okay, hey, well, Jim, hold on a second, Jim. Chicken, the chief, chief, the chief is very upset. Yeah, he, he's chop, gonna, he, chop chop liver, liver. He's chop safe. Hey, one piece, chop liver. Hey, okay, Jim, relax. Uh, chief, relax. Uh, Jim, he's very insulted. You know, he is a gynecologist. Not only is he a gynecologist, but he's spiritual. He's a shaman. He can, he can provide you spiritual guidance. In, 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 let me make sure I get this translation right, Chief. Hmm, yeah. Spiritual cornhole guidance. Hey, hey, is that what you we said? We call it maze. Maze. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. All right. Um, Jim, uh, yes, it's not the healthiest thing you can be doing, the chief mm -hmm. says. That yeah, she's you, small. Mm. Oh, is, Isabel's back. Mm, she's Sorry? into this conversation. Uh, is she small? Is she little? <laughs> She's a, she's a petite girl, yeah. She's oh. a petite girl. Oh, you better mm. wash out. Isabel, that is You Isabel. get that penis and you keep it in your past. Okay, so Isabel, mm. this would not be something you would be Absolutely. Absolutely. No, you can break or like you a church. You can hurt, you can rip. Or you like can cord of wood. Cord of, like split, wood splitting. Mm. You can also cause you know, all kinds of anal pathology. It's Hemorrhoids. not a good thing. Hemorrhoids mm. and tears mm. and fissures. And mm. It's not a healthy thing, Jim. And some women like it, it's fine, yes. but some... Let's call it maize. The cornhole like is meant for the buffalo, not the rat. I don't no. like the little fish. No, not... No. Well, mm -hmm. there you go. Like Isabel, it? no, she does. Mm -hmm. Isabel does not like it. Does uh, Alana like it? Do mm -hmm. I like anal sex? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hate you know? It. Oh, what's your fault? The phone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. actually, honestly, Lothan, I'll be, let me you know, slip hand I'm under an artistic clock. type. You know, yeah. hey, hey, I'm, I'm mm. totally game. Mm. But honestly, mm -hmm. I really love, I love mm. oral sex. I, I do okay, like oral down. sex. Slow down, Chief. Mm, fat. But not anal. <laughs> chief, Chief. chief. Uh, Okay, he says, uh, he says it's a bit of a task for a chief. He's referring to abalone. Is that what you said? Oh, yes, I heard this. Yes, I heard you talking about that. No, we we go back door. Use deer fat for lubricant. Yeah. 
Oh, Chief, you're in rare form tonight. Oh, I, I, what? Say, and, uh, I know. What are you going to do? Oh, you got, oh, I know. Oh, it's, you, you're just doing your job. I mm, understand. Hey, I tell you one Tetris. Yeah, okay, hey, Chief. Yeah, uh, uh, Isabel, uh, Lonnie, had enough for the Chief? Any Absol last hey, questions? Hi, guys. Um, uh, I have one more question. Um, uh, huh. I have a, a hair problem, and I, I just like mm. to know as, as far as how, mm. how does a man really like a woman to be shaven down there? Does he mm. like to shave slow, slow down, slow down. Mm. Mm. Slow down. Right. The chief only yeah. speaks English a little bit. Oh, shave, tosha. One nash. He got hey, it. arrowhead. He, he likes it in the shape of arrowhead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and, and he will, uh, he has a dream catcher, mm. feels like a feather. We explained hey, hey, that to his spell earlier. Speculum dream catcher. Speculum dream catcher. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, yeah, feather duster, he okay, called uh, it. His feather duster. Tetris. Say, yeah, well, well, please, please, here, what, one last prayer for the broom here. Just, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, Isabel, this one's for you. Nice. Uh, oh, it's the movie. Uh, Big success. Relax. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey, that's for Lana. Come on, uh, lady pick. Yeah, hey, chick. Hey, uh, face of burn. Hey, yeah, he wants to be sure you're going to get her with your uh, shaving uh, habits. But that was a nice prayer for the nice prayer for the film and its success. And, and he's again, he mentioned Barbara Streisand this time. Oh, so, mm. so, Barbara Chief, thank you very much. Well done. And a pew pro. Yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Uh, All right, thank okay. you, Chief. Enough, hey, enough. Hey, hey, yeah, hey. treacherous. Yeah, thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Well done. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, good night. Good night. Hey. Hey. Thank you, you too. Big guy. He's yeah. huge. He put, did you like that bear? That bear That's skin amazing. he wears on his head. What he is big up head. with that? There he goes. She's chanting. He went down the hall saying so more cool. prayers for your film. He's gonna go see that film. He's, I know. He better. He's, he'll be the guy in the giant bear head. Oh my god! Yeah. He'll, he'll be hey, feeding the Adam, popcorn. Hey, chief, right? rare form tonight. Really? Rare form. Had the Tetris go. That was good. Excellent. Awesome. Yeah. Did you win anything? Uh, yeah. yeah. I think he. I think he liked Alana. I think I think Elizabeth too. Oh really? Yeah. That's I awesome. think he was. He talked about. He's yeah. sort of uh, crossing boundaries, as they say. You know, it's well, like, he, I think he's a passionate man. I mean, any man who gets to that 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 position in life is obviously a man who's very who has some himself. testosterone pumping Absolutely. through him. You know, you Absolutely. Don't, sometimes you you're don't sociopath, lead in a just sociopaths, just get, going for what you can get. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Hey, but didn't yeah. you have some theory about power producing uh, testosterone? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't yeah, become yeah. A, a, a tribal oh, chief. No. But oh, yes, but sometimes it goes in all kinds of directions, you know what I'm oh, saying? Okay. <gasps> well, he's playing Tetris now. Yeah, that's good. Let's, uh... Well, hold on. Oh, yeah, who, do, oh, we don't, who are we talking to? Yeah. Okay, we'll talk to uh, Sarah. Hi. Uh, <clears throat> Sarah. You're uh, 15? Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, well, I lost my virginity at 13, and mm -hmm. ever since then, well, I... Hang on, slow down. Who, uh, how old was the guy that did that with you? 17. Yeah, that is Ooh. not losing your virginity. That's being sexually abused. So okay. you, were, you were abused at 13. Yeah, 17 uh, and 13 is huge. That's huge. It's ridiculous. And uh -huh. ever since then, I've probably only not had sex altogether about a month. And I so think you've gone you've gone on a rampage since that since that rape. So here's the deal. Oh uh, well, well, wait a minute. What did it? What did, did it seem like rape to you, or was it? No, guy... like it was rape. You know, obviously by law, but to me it didn't seem like it. No, here's the deal. You you were sexually abused sometimes before this. That's why you thought that was an okay thing to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. What happened? Yeah. Well, when I was about nine, my brother's friend, he was like 13 or 14. I can remember him like touching me down there, but I was also touching him down there too. Look, mm -hmm. again, Sarah, be, but the, the, just because mm -hmm. a child responds with curiosity doesn't mean the child is having directed sexual behavior. Mm. It's, yeah. you know, it's, it's kids it distort it into, oh, I, I was just as into it or I was responsible. No, no, you're a your child. Yeah, but also there may have been something else uh, brewing, too. <laughs> Boy, there's a lot of chaos in the yeah, home. Yeah, it doesn't have to be, you know, wholesale sexual no, abuse. But, but the, the, when they go that direction, there's often a lot of chaos in the home. Wow. Yeah. Where's your dad? Um, I actually only live with him now. My stepmom and him are getting divorced. Where is your mom? Ooh, yeah, worse. She lives in California. She hasn't been in my life since I was three. Do you don't think that's a little weird? Um, well, I know it's a little weird, but I think, um, my parents, like, have tried to control me a lot, so I think that why I have sex a lot is, like, a control factor for me. No. Uh, what, what, why did your mom leave when you were three? Um, she just left. She decided that she wasn't a good mom and she was just going to leave. Yeah. Okay, well, that that means she is profoundly disturbed. So what is yeah. her problem? Um, I I think, okay, like, when I was, like, two or three, I remember walking in or something, and my dad, like, hitting her or, like, abusing her somehow. There you go. All right, now we got sort of the picture and, and, of a mom who's being physically abused, who abandons you, who is incapable of being a mother. This is and, really and, heavy yeah, stuff. And by the way, you try to explain to uh, most right-thinking women that uh, they're going to uh, never see their three-year-old ever again. They'll kill you. 
Yeah. I'll kill you. No, my mom wouldn't have done that. But your mom yeah. would yell, freak out. And She'll then, actually yell, yeah, yeah, freak out. Throw but, a walnut hat. But throw, <laughs> throw a raisin. And then somebody go hand out raisins so I can take a beating yeah. out on the porch from the neighbor kids. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is a woman who's either a drug addict or yes. f- profoundly or disturbed or yeah. both. She's definitely a drug addict because. All right, well there you go. Well, right, Sarah, come on. This is all. This is the uh, the source of all your problems, and now and, you're just and acting. And you're, you're probably an addict too, Sarah. The sort of addict behavior you're starting to manifest now. So yeah. You know drugs? Um, it's not like I haven't been without seeing my mom. I've seen her like every year. No, about Sarah, like, are you doing drugs also now? Um. Well, I'm drinking a lot. Yeah. Okay. Right. Fifteen, drinking a lot, having sex a lot. So you've. The, the cycle repeats itself. You're, right. you're turning you're, into your mom. You're, yeah, you'll be you'll be pregnant in a year and a half, and then you'll abandon your kid. And right. it'll be, it'll, the it, Akuna Matata, <laughs> they, they call it. <laughs> so, is there a way that I can like get help? Yes. Akuna Matata. There is treat for that. By the way, he, he, there's a lawsuit he's got going with Disney over that. Oh, that was his saying. Talk about. He, he used to say it all the time. Was, you know, I thought it meant no worries. Yeah. Well, right. it was his? He he claimed it was hang loose, and uh, he claimed, in the cycle of life. He got <laughs> drunk. He went down to Anaheim. Next thing you know, it's in a movie, and he, he's P.O.'d, but he says that's about all he can say about he it. He hangs out at Downtown Disney a lot. <laughs> he does. He's uh, three drinks. Wow. Uh, so they actually think he's he's part of Tom Sawyer's that's island. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I saw him yeah, there. And he's really, he's always confused because he's wearing buckskins and a headdress, and they're like, what, are you on break? And he's like, what? Yeah, hey. Uh, yeah, he's, this guy's really his character. He's got his, his horse, handicap horse placard on there. He's got his <laughs> pinto horse parked out there. All right, hey, uh, Sarah, so here's the thing. Uh, I have a crystal ball. I've seen it. It uh, looks like hell. Your future looks like hell. Can you slow yeah. it down? Can you reel it in? No, no, no. This is treatment. You're, you're going to spin out. Hey, you need help. You need help. you got to get yourself yes. some help. You need, you need somebody. Th- th- your, your parents trying to control your behavior is I'm trying to help you. You need to be able to contain these impulses. They are destructive. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how to, though. Like. I understand that. And that's fine. And that's what treatment would help you with. Let me really. Uh, uh, where did she get treatment? The Ventura. Uh, there's a lot of treatment centers down in here. You know, getting adolescent treatment is difficult. Well, why, maybe she should start with a uh, Al-Anon, Alateen, or something well, like she's that. She's a full-blown addict yeah, herself. Yeah, but she's not though. gonna. She's not. She doesn't know where to start. You, you know, certainly start with an Alateen locally. There's, you know, Ventura has various healthcare facilities. You can get a referral to something in your mm-hmm. area. Start with AA. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know the name of any adolescent mental health services in the area, but there has to be. There, every community's got some. Well, start with the Alateen and, and let them direct you. All right, here's here's the thing that's uh, interesting, which is the the parents. I'm, see, it's interesting to me that a woman, because she's 15 and she's probably attractive, you don't have to be attractive. You really just you have to have a vagina. That's mm-hmm. it. And and then a there's always vagina. there's always a slew of guys yeah. around 17, 18 year old loser guys mm-hmm. that are willing to pay attention to you, yep. have sex with you, buy a few things, whatever. So it's an easy out and an easy distraction. It's it's sort of what drugs become to guys mm-hmm. oftentimes, which is it makes me feel better temporarily. Now, as a woman who gets uh, grows up in an in, in, uh, abusive environment with abandoning mom and stuff, how are you going to tell her at fourteen when she, uh, next thing you know she's thirteen? She all of a sudden she's got Celebrity. a C cup going, yeah. and there's guys uh, honking at her when she crosses the street. How are you going to tell? Her? Ignore that. Yeah. Ignore that. Mm-hmm. You know all the attention you never got at home. Yeah, these guys want to pay to you. Ignore it. Yeah, ignore it. Doesn't mean it. anything. Doesn't Keep studying. Keep yeah. studying. Mm-hmm. I don't think you could do that and now i'm wondering with guys you see guys you don't have that outlet now here's an interesting thing yeah guys oftentimes come come from that environment start fighting they just start fighting yes. they become aggressive right. some, but but sometimes they end up being football stars right. and, and, and and athletes That's and that true. kind of stuff i'm wondering and then the women just get venereal disease and get pregnant so and get we screwed need up. something for the women that has a similar kind of outlet from huh? from a from a societal yeah, right. standpoint the, the women, Get the, worse. the guys oftentimes end up being captain of industry types. Yeah, yeah. They, they become maniacal. They push. Yeah. They, they, they're these A-type a, a personalities. Yeah, but the women become Marilyn Monroe. What, there, there is an outlet for uh, them. Once in a while. Yeah. But the, the vast majority of them are just pregnant at 16 yeah. and they have to drop out of high school. Yeah, yeah. Guys, even though guys end up being drug addicts and being a-holes too, once in a while, and off, more often than the women's side, I think, it ends up fueling them and they end up getting this uh, desire or whatever. They, they become horrible people, but they successful people. <laughs> I, I'm wondering, you, you know what I'm saying, yeah, Drew? Yeah, I hear you. And, and if, if they had that sexual outlet, let's put it this way. Imagine... If the world was gay, 
<laughs> oh, close your eyes and picture Utopia. that uh, astopia for a second. <laughs> the world is gay. So there's a, a young 14, 15 year old male who did, got abused, who got whatever, and now everyone's looking at him. Yeah. Everyone like, like that. Everyone looks at him. Hey, what do you want? Oh, yeah, but but stuff. but everybody. Yeah, yeah. Not okay. not a small right, percentage of closeted, right, right, whatever. Right. The entire world. Could yeah. you resist that at 15? Mm -hmm. And as someone's telling you, hey, uh, Drew, we're going to need you to study, and then you got to go to soccer practice. You're like, Pfft. Are you kidding? I'm pulling a train over here. This is awesome. This is great. <laughs> I mean, if you reversed yeah. it and just said women yeah. were like men, yeah. me at 14 or 15, right. all these hot 17-year-old oh. chicks are giving me attention, want to hang out, that's it. That's Forget good. about sports. Yeah. We're screwing. Yes. How do, you, how do you convey that to a young lady who, who, who comes it. from Sarah's environment? Mm -hmm. hmm? Or what else, what, more importantly, what other options can we give them? <laughs> That's the bigger question. Right. All right. Ovaltine. We got to yeah, give me a little Ovaltine. And like, we got We got to take ourselves <laughs> a, We got to take a uh, little break. <laughs> uh, we will uh, be right back. What's the name of the uh, new movie you're in? Meet the. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. After this. <laughs> Buddy, it's Loveline, I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Alana Ubach is uh, here tonight. She is in oh. Meet the Fockers, Ooh, which she is... Just uh, took a look at you, Adam. Yeah. Drew <laughs> showed her, showed her uh, pictures of the uh, kids. Oh, beautiful babies. Cute kids. <gasps> Your wife looks like my mother when she was very young. My mother in pictures of, uh, of when she was pregnant of me. Of me. That's amazing. Yeah. That is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Drew's showing... So I, uh, my mom. You know, it's funny. I, I love how this, uh, you know, I, I went over to, uh, me and my wife went over to uh, Drew's house. Uh, oh, the kids look beautiful. Last night. Went to Drew's house uh, last night, went out to a little dinner. I was walking up the pathway, and I was thinking to myself, all right, let's see. Don't screw the kids' names up. I got the triplets. <laughs> They're already going to need enough therapy without uh, the partner screwing the names up. So I was, I was heading upstairs. I was like, all right, I know uh, Jordan, uh, Douglas, and Paulina, all right? Paulina's a chick. That's <laughs> easy. That, huh? Jordan and Douglas, uh, they got some similarities, but they're easy because uh, Jordan looks like like a Jordan and Douglas uh, looks like a Douglas. Where is that? And uh, it's they, true. they really I do. Know, though. It's, it's, yeah, it's easy to. And by the way, I get angry at people that don't look like their name <laughs> because you can never remember it. The oh, people's yeah, names yeah, you never yeah. remember. The right. people don't look. Drew had the good sense to name the Douglas. Douglas, and he looks like a Mind Douglas. Mind you, we've not really met the kids, and we got the names. No, well, I, don't know, I don't know how, how, works, I don't know how but, it works. Yeah. I don't know if they're signed. I don't, I don't know any of that stuff. But the point is, is the uh, the Jordan looks like a yeah, Jordan, and is. the Douglas looks like a Douglas. Although, if you don't see them for uh, eight months, they, they grow four inches and put on ten pounds. And uh, one of them has a goatee. He's 11 <laughs> now. The other one's got a, what I would call an aggressive piercing. Uh, <laughs> I just, I just, <clears> this point, one is a Prince Albert impression. The, the point is, is I was walking up the stairs. I was walking up the pathway last night before I knocked on the door, and I thought, "All right, let's not screw the kids' names up." And uh, the door uh, swung open, and uh, there was uh, Drew's wife, and there was a, a child at the top of the stairs. And he was blonde, and he was sort of skinny, and he was probably about 11 years old. And I looked at him, and I just thought, "Well, it ain't Jordan." Hey, Douglas, how you doing? And it's like. Nope, that was a friend of theirs, just standing. <laughs> four, I don't know, four boys lined up. I don't know <laughs> why he had to stand in my sight line that way. I don't know what the kid would... What 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 kind of thing is that? The kid should be in the room playing. There is growing. Uh, I did like the math, which is uh, he was the closest looking. I didn't, I didn't then, factor then it got in. Confusing. They were like, oh, no, oh, oh, oh. they're like coming out of the woodwork. Then there were two other right, sort right. of toe headed kids right. that oh, all man. sort of could have mixed and matched. But the the point is, is. Uh, I didn't factor in the uh, the decoy kit. Right. I thought I had my choice between your kids, yeah. and there were there were a hundred percent more uh, blonde yes. boys there for me to choose from. Sorry. Oh wow. That. That's all right. We wanted to build humiliating. Humiliating. They were fine. All right. They're good. The kids right. never speak to you. Melissa. Problems. Yeah. You're 16. Yeah. What's up? All right. Every time me and my boyfriend have intercourse, mm -hmm. like after, let's say, like. Within a minute, it starts it's hurting right there. Yeah. What happens after a minute? Like, in between, um, beneath my ribs mm -hmm. and above my pelvic bone, it hurts right mm. in the section. Now, beneath your ribs and above your pelvic bone yeah, are like, different places, huh? Yeah. Do, are they both in, in the back or in the front? It's in the front. 
In the front, beneath, yeah. so by the pubic bone. Yeah. The, well, above the You're you saying it hurts when you have sex, basically? The pelvic bone that, or the that's pubic? What happens? Yeah, she's having sex, but she's having sex it's up here and button. down. Like, well, right. where's your pubic bone and where's your pelvis bone? Your pelvis, your pelvis is the back, the your hips, hips no, and the pubis up front. Yeah. Well, listen, Melissa, it, that all area is just sort of visceral pain, and it means you're having some, he's hitting against the uterus, and that can be just enough to cause that kind of pain, but sometimes there can be tube infections or infections in the uterus or ovarian cysts or endometriosis, and all these things can cause pain, too, if there's pressure. What's uh, what's going on? How old is this guy? I don't trust he's him. He's my age. Uh, 16. Mm -hmm. yeah. You guys using a condom? Yeah. Have yeah, had, and like every, when we use a condom, I don't know if that's causing it. It's have you ever had any infections? No, he's a virgin. Well, he was a virgin. Uh, yeah. I, I was All right, a, so you're sexually active. It's time to get pelvic exams, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've got to have that to make sure there's nothing going on down there, but it probably is just sort of normal pressure from... Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I was your age, I, I would go to Planned Parenthood and get checked out, and, and you know, it, it was just basically, it was a sex and thing. You're you know? small, though. You, cause it, do you yeah. have a I have a very short torso, so, and, and mm. you know, I'm my boyfriend three. is kind of well endowed. It hurts every wow. once in a while, I hear nice. It. That's what you want. <laughs> what? <laughs> a short torso? Well, what you don't want is the opposite. She's, a long uh, torso with a She's kind of a big gal, wiener. and I'm pretty small down there. Oh, that's the worst. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's bad times. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's really... No, I don't. Half of... Half of a feeling, like let's say, half of having a big bicep is the size of your bicep. And the other half is how tight the shirt is. Right. right. You know. You know what I mean. And Absolutely. You could. You you could take Lou Ferrigno and put him in a baggy enough shirt, and it just wouldn't look like there was right. as much there. So you put on the tight shirt, and he right. like flexes, and you hear the cracking of the threads. You right. know. So so you know your small shirt is a good place. Tight shirt's a good place to start. So you're saying a lot is a tight shirt? She's a tight shirt, I yeah. I can't believe how dirty the show can be. I love it. You know, uh, <laughs> I was thinking about it. I was talking to some guys today, and I was thinking about, uh, I don't know, we we're talking about the uh, performer, the Vegas performer, Danny Gans. Yeah. And I thought uh, every time I, I see a picture of him on a billboard when I'm coming from the airport, he's wearing a super tight black short sleeve velvet <laughs> yeah. shirt. And yeah. I thought, and I, I put this out to the room. I said, is I there anybody zero. you like who wears tight shirts? Is there a guy you know who no. wears super tight shirts, but he's still a really cool guy and you hang out a lot? He's your bro. He's your buddy. He's Danny your bro. Zico. But he wears super tight shirts, and I thought, no, yeah. I don't know any well, guy was, wears tight shirts. I remember when the, the Lacoste shirts were a big deal. People wore tighter shirts then. Yeah, that was okay. That's fifteen 20, years, 20 ago. years ago. Not anymore. Huh? Not now. Do you know a guy with tight uh, wears mm -hmm. a tight shirt? How about a velvet black V-neck tight no. shirt? No. All right, short sleeve. All right, <laughs> we're going to uh, take ourselves a little break. Alana Ubak is here from uh, what movie, Alana? Meet the. F <laughs> we'll be right back after this. <laughs> That's the show. I want to thank uh, Lana Ubach. Thank you, man. Tonight. Thanks a lot. See me at the Fockers. I, I will. <laughs> I'll see you there. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to see you there. Uh, Mazel Tov is uh, half of Drew's side says. Uh, <laughs> and all the success of uh, the new movie is going to be the biggest yeah, movie of the year. And absolutely. you got uh, what uh, sounds like a uh, scene stealing role. Oh, it's fun. It's Isabel. I look nothing like the character. She's 40. She's a, she's a hot Latina maid. I and will, uh, it's fun. I will be uh, anticipating yeah. seeing this movie. Happy All right. birthday, Michael. Yeah. Hey. yeah. Mazel well, tov. Mazel right. tov. So, until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. Or the station. The, the, the producer for Loveline is Anne Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.